I'm typically a dreamer of design, but our sponsor PCBWay can turn those dreams into reality. So you don't have a CNC machine or heavy duty 3D printing. You also probably don't have personal ability to do injection molding or sheet metal fabrication, but you do have an idea for a custom PC tower build to be your end all, be all, everything chassis. PCBWay offers all of the services you need to manufacture and produce your designs. Check the link down below to get started today. Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt, and uh, today I'm taking a look at Royal Clutch's RK96 Limited. Now this one is after my own heart. It's my new favorite keyboard. I liked it so much, I bought a second one. They took a full-size keyboard and condensed it, gave me all the things I wanted and every ability to fill in the gaps, of which I did. This is now my Testbench Daily Driver keyboard for gaming and typing, and I also have one for on the go. If a 10 key is a must for you, but you have hangups over the potential of the layout, take it from me, it takes almost no time to acclimate to this keyboard. I did F11 and F12 to be my end and home keys because I really like that and I need an end and home key. And I will say it did take me a second for my thumb to get used to the smaller zero on the 10 key, but I am 100% behind this keyboard. They even offer a nice added bonus of a slim magnetic wrist rest for those that are desiring a wrist rest. It's just always a nice feature to have something a little bit extra too in that box. The keyboard can be either wired or wireless. For wireless, you can go either Bluetooth or 2.4 GHz dongle, which is secured beneath the keyboard, by the way. If you prefer wired mode, then you have two USB pass-throughs, which is hugely awesome in my book. I love USB pass-throughs on a keyboard. On the top right is a volume wheel and a quick mute for easy volume control, and I also love that. You can probably see at this point why it's checking all the boxes for me. What a lot of people will care to hear is the tippity-tap test of the keyboard itself, so let's pause here real quick and then we'll talk about it. Just like the RK84 Limited, the RK96 Limited uses RK yellow switches, which are really just so satisfying to me. The more I use them, the more they grow on me, too. Something I found a little bit odd was that while three pin switches are in the bag for extra switches, five pin variants of them are already on the keyboard. The keyboard does take five pin switches, so three or five will work. Just thought it was a little odd that the extra switches that come with it are three pin and not five pin, like the ones that are already installed. Moving back to some of the more basic functions, like most Royal Kludge keyboards, in Bluetooth mode, QWE can be set between three independent Bluetooth mode profiles for quick swapping. If you're going Bluetooth, you need to set it to Bluetooth on the bottom toggle underneath the keyboard. A second toggle will let you turn it from wireless to wired mode. And the G opposite of the B on that toggle is how you set it to be in gigahertz dongle mode. In my experience, Bluetooth is the least reliable way to connect to a device with a mouse or a keyboard especially. So if you're having any issues there and you want to be wireless, give the dongle a shot. The riser feet on the bottom of the keyboard actually have two different stages. So you can go to a max lift. Or if that's too high, then you can change it and use only the secondary stage of the riser feet and not lift off quite so much. Kind of helps you find that perfect spot. Because of Royal Kludge's unique unique designs, sometimes matching certain keycaps presents an issue. Specifically on this keyboard, I noticed it with the right shift. It's an uncommon size that's kind of hard to find a keycap to match. That's just something I felt like I should mention in case somebody gets it and sort of swaps keycaps like I did on the second one. The RK96 is simultaneously not new for Royal Kludge, but also totally different. They make great products, but rarely offer disappointment. This is something I found with most Royal Kludge products. They specifically hold to a mold of common functionality across their keyboards, and if you've ever used one, Almost all of them feature the same variety of functions from the UI suite to onboard controls with quick macro recording and the ability to set and select profiles. The bigger, more recent changes are clever ways to display things like battery life. Speaking about battery life, it will totally depend on how much you use it and what your settings are set for it. You can have a wide range of how much battery life you'll get out of it. If the rest of the industry focused around making mechanical keyboards isn't taking note of what Royal Kludge does and the way that they do it, as well as the way that they listen to people and implement defined design changes, they're missing an opportunity to witness a company that just does it right, and that's 100% my opinion, but that's how I feel at this point. For now, this is it. This is what I have been waiting for. I look forward to future concepts. Maybe they will do something with, you know, a modular keyboard design or something. That would be pretty cool. But this is a quite fantastic keyboard of which I'm very fond of, enough so that I have two of them now. Anyways, I hope this was somewhat helpful. You guys have a great day, night, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next video that I do.